Yeah, it, it's funny that JavaScript uh, was the culprit for the year, just as we were talk, talking <laughs> about, uh, hey, just use JavaScript to express it's your like, category theory ideas. <laughs> It's the language that must not be named. <laughs> yeah. uh, cool. So, okay, we got in, we covered how you got into category theory. We covered, uh, we, we got you on record saying that you recommend JavaScript over Haskell. Uh, <laughs> Anything I say can and will be used against me. Oh yeah, for sure. We, we're going to clip that bit and uh, <laughs> we're going to paste it whenever we have a conversation. So let's see what's so okay. Can you do you want to share what kind of project you're working on or like what kind of uh, um, ideas you you? Sure. Yeah, I, I I don't know if like you'll find this very entertaining. There's uh, it's, it's all kind of uh, dry, but um, maybe I can give you an overview of what I'm working on, and you can pick whatever sounds interesting to you. Sure. So uh, the stuff that I've been working on recently is. Uh, well, uh, maybe I'll start at the leaves of what I'm working on, and then like I'll, <laughs> sure. I'll work backwards from what I'm working on in order to work on that. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been working on uh, uh, this library called... Uh, uh, I've been working on sort of uh, biparsing, right? Like uh, the, one of the applications that I've been working mm -hmm. on is biparsing, and that sort of overlaps kind of with what you were working on too. Mm -hmm. So it, like that's actually why, why I... Uh, and I, when I was able to help you out with that stuff, there's a lot of the, the things that you were running into I'd already uh, gone through. So I just okay. like sort of crypt the stuff that <laughs> I was doing in my uh, cool. uh, in my code. It, it's not exactly the same stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like you, you mentioned that, because uh, like I'm just doing string by parsing, whereas you have more structure in your thing. But there's a, a few similarities. Um, so with by parsing, one of the things that uh, uh, I'm interested in is applying optics directly to... Uh, by parsers and th this thing is interesting because it actually arises from another thing I was working on uh, which is user interfaces so I, I have this uh, well I don't have this pure script library but actually here I'll send you a link to uh, this library uh, this UI library in pure script um, so a while ago we were talking about uh, simplifying uh, what react does like we were discussing I think uh, the idea of uh, how do you make a pure version of React, like avoid doing side effects mm -hmm. uh, willy-nilly? Um, and so we simplified it down to sort of this type uh, that's very, uh, like, uh, hang on, let me see if I can find where the type itself is and send you a link to this. Um, moment. Uh, here. So the, the theory here is that this type is a user interface, the one that I just linked. There's, there's a lot of stuff okay. in there. But I was trying to find it while like it... <laughs> Okay, so it's a U to unit to S to V. Okay. Yeah, so this type seems like it's very abstract. It's almost abstract enough to be completely useless. But <laughs> it turns out that there's that most almost, uh, well, I, I don't want to be like too uh, bombastic here, but... but for a large class of user interfaces, okay. all of the ones that we've tried at least, this type is sufficient to model a user interface. And you can see how it's a very simple type. It's like you have a handler that comes in. This is how mm -hmm. you produce updates. The U to end unit is what you receive. Um, and this is sort of how, where you send your updates. The U is what kind of updates the, uh, the user interface produces. The S is the current state of the, uh, the user interface. Um, the M is some kind of effect context mm -hmm. in which the user interface evolves. Um, and the V is the representation of the user interface. Okay. Using just this type, um, we, can, uh, we can model, like we have to do MVC, we're working on real world app, blah, blah, blah. The cool thing is that uh, most of the library is just instances for this type. So <laughs> what can you wit witness about this type? It's a profunctor in S and U. And what is it? What is it? Like, what is the buzzword that's associated with profunctor? Profunctor what? Okay, you, you mean optics, right? Up when you talk about optics, exactly. Okay. So because it's a profunctor, you can actually build user interfaces using optics. You can apply an optic directly to a user interface to get a different user interface. So let's say you've got a user interface that, uh, here, let, let me find an example, because this is a little bit confusing. 
But uh, imagine you have a counter. Uh, hang on, let me go find a counter now. Uh, and f like, feel free to just say, okay, abort, let's go to something else, because I don't know how much you want to hear about this thing. But, <laughs> well, no, no, um, actually, this, this is super interesting, and, uh, and we might, uh, yeah. Here's a, here's a counter. Yeah, I think this is very cool. Uh, this, uh, oops, I did not mean to click that. So it's a counter where we're running under effect, and we start from JSX to integers. Um, yeah, so that... Think, think about what this type means. Like uh, component prime is just like the last two things are the same. So mm -hmm. S and U are the same, right? So you've got a component which uh, runs in just arbitrary effects. Like the, the, the problem here is right now we're using React DOM. So again, note that we didn't actually tie ourselves to React or even to PureScript. Mm -hmm. that, that type, U to MV, S to U, is totally polymorphic in almost everything other than unit and functions. So you can port that to Haskell and use it for a terminal user interface library. Mm -hmm. Or you can port it to uh, .NET and use it for a WP WPF application. All that changes is V, what you use to represent your, like the sort of uh, tree that represents your actual user interface, which, which gets interpreted ultimately. Like in the worst case, V can just be a 2D grid of pixels. <laughs> okay, right? sure. So that, that's like ultimately all user interfaces is that. They're just a 2D grid of pixels. Um, and there's some state from which you produce the 2D grid of pixels, and there's a U to M unit that allows you to evolve this. Um, anyway, so it, going back to the counter, you've got a component with an effect and a, a user interface representation. In this case, we're using JSX. That's why we end up with effect. Um, and okay. it consumes a current integer state and produces a, current, a, a final integer state. And note that we're not using any combinators to build it. This is literally a function. I'm just writing a function here. The a do is actually just uh, applicative notation for the function mm -hmm. uh, applicative. So we're using uh, the applicative for two argument functions. Uh, and we say a button is another component. That's another two argument function. And we pass it through. Uh, now, these two are not optics that you might be familiar with, the c.handle thing. But lc map is mm -hmm. uh, it's just dimap for the left side. Mm -hmm. If you can think about that. So what we do is, um, te OK, let's go to text, actually. Text is right above, and it's an even simpler component. So you can think of, uh, uh, hang on, what, what exactly is r.text? Um, React basic DOM, right? So what it does is it takes uh, a string uh, and it ignores the, the update because text never updates, right? So it takes mm -hmm. the handler, just ignores that. It takes a string and produces a React text element. That's all this component is. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And, right, so now because... Oh, so this, if you have a static component, component, then this is ignored, and then you just go from, like, it's just something from string to the component, right? Right, exactly, yeah. Uh, hey, Got thank it. you for the follow, so, um, Bolt. Sorry, go ahead. Right, so... Now, because it's a pro functor, we can uh, map the uh, contravariant or contravariant end. So mm -hmm. we can contra map it with show and get. So now we have a user interface element that can show An end, whose uh, state is not string. It can be any showable thing, mm -hmm. right? So instead of text, we have any showable. We have a component that can that can render any showable thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you can combine a bunch of them and, and produce, uh, we've got like a little DSL for, pr for producing uh, a nested, this is like this DSL with like uh, uh, the pipe less than character and whatnot. Those are just, uh, it's like a JSX library. It's just for building up JSX mm -hmm. uh, elements. So we just have, uh, once we get, what you get on the left-hand side of the applicative do notation is the final element, the JSX element. So okay. you get the JSX element, and you, you produce it in, uh, in all of these different contexts. The idea here is now that you have this counter, which focuses on an integer, if you have a lens from a record into a, a property that has an integer, you can get a user interface that displays that whole state. So let's say your top level application state has an integer somewhere in there. You can turn your counter into a user interface off that entire state by using a lens. So you can use a lens from that record to um, that integer uh, and, and use that to display the entire component. And you can, okay. because these components are monoids, 
Sorry, you can can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 I can. Because these components are monoids, you can just put them next to each other, and uh, sort of like show them next to each other. Basically. You can have right, so you can have lots of different <clears throat> components focusing on different parts of the state, and you can just put them next to each other in order to render the okay. entire state. But to me, this thing kind of looks a lot like a. Uh, building block for for UI libraries, right? Because it you still need like the React JSX to type to like you you still need a exactly. way like you still need this right the the DOM and then maybe even a way to like have child components and then access them and share state and, and so all of that right, which uh, isn't something that well, you this, deal with right. Exactly, or, but we don't have state, so we don't use the JSX state mm -hmm. ab abstraction at all. We only use this sort of input. Your state is just an argument to you always. Okay. It's like the second argument to any component. So we don't use updating state. Like this component never updates. It's just a pure function from S to uh, a JSX. And all that happens is if you want to update, you use the first argument that you're given, which is the uh, the uh, handler that you receive, right? So you've got a ha you've got a function from U to uh, effect of unit. And you cool. can stick whatever updates you want into there. In this case, you can stick a new integer. That's how it works. Right? Like you've got a handle function that uh, can update uh, stuff. So what here the... is that we eliminate? Uh -huh. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. So if you if you use like for example, instead of V, you use a two D grid of pixels. There's no state management in there, mm -hmm. but you just need something on the outside that can handle rendering that that two uh, D array of pixels and when an update comes in, producing a new state and feeding it back into the component. If you can do that, you can just graft all the components together into one giant component that represents your entire application and interpret that in some domain. Hmm. Interesting. Um, that's pretty cool. So did, did you do any sort of like, uh, how does that counter no text to a state? Uh, wait, you mean, you mean the, uh, the counter? I'm not sure what Vince means. Uh, I I don't quite follow this. Are we? Maybe maybe I'll do a separate like uh, I'll I'll do some kind of blog post on or something on this because yeah, yeah. <laughs> like or it's, it's like let's everything see. In one... Does it have some examples or something? Maybe that would make things easier. Or maybe yeah, there are some examples. So maybe we could play with some examples at some point. Maybe you could even do that on There's stream. An examples folder with with uh, with like all these different uh, things, like a thing that shows cat pictures and to do MVC and routing and. All of that stuff. So I think right here you're building the the component, right? But it's like text is just this thing, right? It's a different. It's a. I, I can. Uh, I think the the problem here is that this is a little bit confusing because I'm using the applicative uh, do notation for mm -hmm. functions, right? So it'd be easier if you just received like if I did this in like a point full form. You can do counter handler equals uh, counter handler s equals. Right? So then you receive a function. If you think about this for a little bit, what the type is, mm -hmm. you'll receive, if you look at the counter's type, uh, you'll receive a function from int to effect of unit, and you'll okay. receive an int. Mm -hmm. So you'll receive the current int, which at which you're supposed to render the entire user interface. And you'll receive a function from integers to effect of unit. Mm -hmm. Right, and then then now your your uh, what your what your job to produce is is to produce JSX, and in JSX you can respond somehow to uh, to changes, right? So you you render two buttons, and into those buttons you pass the handler. So you're rendering two button components, and you pass the handler into that button component, so that now when you click on it, what 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 this C dot handle underscore thing does is it just contra maps the unit that buttons produce to produce plus one instead. So when when a button, if you go up and look at a button, it'll produce uh, units. That's what the update type of uh, button is. Um, and what we want instead here is to produce plus one, because the uh, the counter is supposed to emit integers. Mm -hmm. So uh, one button produces plus one, the other button produces minus one. And that's the update that it feeds into the. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll maybe like again. This is a this is maybe like a confusing explanation. I'll I'll try to do like a very like without any sugar, I'll try to do an explanation of how just using functions we can write components. Yeah, it may be um, cool to have an example. 
where you're writing things that are very explicit, right? I have not looked at the examples yet, but uh, if they use the same <laughs> style of writing code, then maybe it might it might be easier for people to follow a like planar example where you don't do like where you explicitly add the parameters here and then call them explicitly just to make it very clear what happens, right? Right. Well, what you'll see is that like the handler gets received and the uh, the state gets received. And then into the child component, you're passing different like adjustments of the state and the mm -hmm. handler. So, but when when you pass it into the child component, the handler, uh, you pre-compose it with some function that adjusts the child component's update type to your own update type. And when mm -hmm. you pass the state into the uh, child component, you do the opposite. You adjust the state itself to adapt it to the child component's state type. And that's why it's a profunctor, right? Like there's one. Mm -hmm. direction in which you map backwards and the other direction in which you map forwards um anyway like uh, this is a little bit uh involved so i feel like i'm like uh, confusing people with this but we can uh, i'll definitely try to come up with a blog post or something that shows uh, how this works and one one thing you can do is actually just use io of unit as your ui type and then you can just run your ui in your terminal use it to like, oh, okay. read lines and mm -hmm. output lines cool so that's one way of, uh, <laughs> of doing things Okay, that's super um, cool. So anyway, it, the reason I was talking about this was as part so of... So we, we have a question. Uh, what happens when you compose the profunctors? When you compose uh, two components? CMPs, like, yeah, components, I, I think. Yeah, I think uh, the components. Okay, so what, what we have right now is lateral composition. So that that's actually, that, that's a good segue here. Um, uh, I don't know about like a uh, left can extension and blah, blah, blah. I remember Reed started talking about this stuff when I, I was talking to him and I didn't understand what he was uh, going for. <laughs> I need to revisit what he was he was saying. Um, but maybe something cool happens there. I haven't investigated that. But I do know what you can do in terms of lateral composition. So let's say you've got two components, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've got a component that uh, accepts a certain kind of input certain kind of state and you've got a component that produces a certain kind of uh, update and now you've got two of them with different state states and updates right how do you mm -hmm. combine them side by side essentially right when you if you think about it a little bit if you put two components side by side a two user interfaces side by side what you get is a user interface that accepts both of the states that you uh, there's multiple actually actually multiple ways to compose them but mm -hmm. the first one that we want is got two user interfaces when you want to put them side by side you show both of them mm -hmm. and you accept in order to show both of them you need to accept a product of their states right a pair of mm -hmm. the states that each one consumes so you take the first state and you use it to show the first one take the second state and use it to show the second mm -hmm. one but what happens to the updates the update that you're going to receive out of this component the resulting component is a sum of the two updates so you're going to either receive an update from the first component or an update from the second component, or maybe okay. alternate, uh, alternately, right? So any of them can be uh, can update at any time. Mm -hmm. So if you go to uh, this SYTC class here, I'll send you, actually mm -hmm. I'll just send you a direct link to the thing. No, I think so I can. in terms yeah. of lateral com composition, uh, SYTC. Mm. So wrong. Well, I see the profunctor. Um code here like die map and lc map and r map implemented here yeah so there's like this type called switch uh maybe if you control f for switch you'll see it there we go you want the function or is there a just the function switch mm -hmm. uh maybe i'm lagging a bit here because I'm, I'm following the other stream. okay there you go yeah perfect so this this type here uh if you look at what happens here is this is a monoidal profunctor. This so this is why like I've been playing with monoidal profunctor for so long, and and uh, biparsing has a lot of other applications for monoidal uh, profunctors, including for like routing and stuff. Like when you're doing routing in your uh, browser URL bar, you can use biparsers for that, and those also involve monoidal profunctors in various ways. Um, so this is a monoidal profunctor, and a single profunctor can have multiple instances. Like one way of of showing. Uh, switch is a monoidal profunctor uh, or a, a way of witnessing a monoidal profunctor for components. And the other one is uh, DMUX, if you see further mm -hmm. up. There's like a DMUX thing. And in that one, you show only one component at a time. 
But one way of showing two components is to switch between them, depending on the, the state that you receive. If you receive one state, you show one component. If you receive another state, you show the other component. The other way of combining two components is to show both of them and let them update simultaneously. So either one can update at any given time. Um, so in order to like sort of formalize what the behavior should be for all of this stuff, what is, if this is a monoidal profunctor, should it be associative, should it have a unit, things like that, I got like really far down the line of what are monoidal profunctors, and just in general, what like how do monoidal functors work? Um, so as part of that, I started working on the biparsing library. I started working on a, um, uh, I started working on the pipes library. So like, once you sort of like come up with the abstraction, you want to go find all the places where you can apply it, right? So you you find all of like these different places where. Uh, it's useful. It's useful for combining optics laterally. It's useful for combining pipes laterally. It's useful for combining user interfaces la laterally. It's so it, when you say pipes, do you mean yeah, something that's similar to uh, like the actual pipes library or conduit or something like that? It's literally, it's literally the pipes library. Oh, so you so just actually, worked uh, on the pipes library, yeah, like improved. I think I remember because yeah, I was. I'll... Yeah, I think I remember there was. Uh, yeah. There's a there's ways to and actually for the pipes library it turns out that it gives us a way to compose compose things uh, both sort of horizontally and vertically so you can put pipes one after the other um, mm -hmm. uh, using and that's also a monoidal functor in, interestingly enough and another way to compose them is to put them side by side so if you put them one after the other it sort of swallows a certain compatible pair of requests and response types and. You sort of feed things in at one end and they come out the other end. Mm -hmm. If you put them in parallel, then they can, it's it's a little bit kind of like, there's a little bit of an analogy to user interfaces there. Um, so anyway, I don't know if we want to get into uh, that. If you want, I can send you a couple of links to what to the issue that. Uh, that so I think I remember that, but I don't remember why I got to that, but I think we've talked about that before in chat or something, because I definitely remember this issue. Uh, let me. I think uh, maybe you were doing a similar thing. You were trying to witness something like. Uh, yeah, like I don't remember. But the interesting thing yeah. about the, the interesting thing about pipes is that they are monoidal using uh, a, a slightly weird tensor. The two tensors that I've talked about so far are tuples and ethers. But there's another tensor which is tuples ethered with ethers, which is these. You you, you might have seen like these or alignable, mm -hmm. like the alignable class at some point, and that's also a monoidal. Uh, structure and there's lots of functors that are uh, monoidal with respect to these and so because pipes don't have to have the same length so in this one I, I sort of cheated a bit I made sure that pipes have exactly the same length and if you do that it turns out that they become something like an applicative so that's one way of mm -hmm. being a monoidal functor in reality pipes don't have the same length like a, one pipe can exit while the other one is still running right? mm -hmm. so you can't actually pair together their eventual result. If one of them just exits and the other one is still going, result, because you're stuck with one of them. So what you want instead is these. You want these so that if you know all the stars align and they exit at exactly the same time, you can produce a pair of their eventual results. Mm -hmm. But if, you, if one exits first, then you produce left of that thing, or the other exits first, you produce right. Of, it's not called left and right. Mm -hmm. yeah, this that makes that sense. But so yeah, so like the idea here in this issue that I, I pasted that, but with uh, these instead. Um, anyway, so there's like this thing, there's like lateral composition, there's lots of different ways. My point here is that monoidal functors are really, really interesting things. Like you can start out with user interfaces and you can go through pipes and go to, even optics themselves can be combined using monoidal functors. And the, there's a paper recently about uh, like a, a paper called uh, uh, a cat pro functor optics a categorical update and mm -hmm. in that one they utilize strong monoidal functors to sort of describe the theory of of uh, optics so that they capture all of the different formulations that we've uh, that you know different people have come up with uh, throughout the years so like all of these different like sort of seemingly incompatible formulations of optics can be unified if you use the idea of a strong monoidal action which is a fun essentially a, a certain kind of strong monoidal functor. Um, cool. So anyway, monoidal functors are cool. <laughs> um, if, you, if you want to talk about that at some point, we can talk about it. Maybe it, it might be a good idea to go over something like that. There's like a lot of articles about it. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to do that sometime. On your stream. For sure. 
um, 